The Battle of Nicopolis in 1396, a coalition of crusader armies led by the King of Hungary and the Holy Roman Empire march on the Ottoman Empire to rid them from the Balkans once and for all and to bring about Christianity once again in the region. What's up guys? I'm Pope John Paul and welcome back. It's another 12-12 battle today and uh, yes, this is the Battle of Nicopolis. And uh, we're going to try and recreate it a bit. We've got a 2v1 here. We've got a huge Ottoman air army here, led by uh, Bayezid the First. As in, uh, well, he's not. We haven't got a model from, but in history, he's led by Bayezid the First. Is uh, the Ottoman army, and then we have uh, King Zig Sigismund of Hungary here, represented by the uh, king's bodyguard. And uh, we've got the Holy Roman Empire here with the Holy Roman Emperor. Even though he wasn't at the battle, he just sent an army and a general, and they were led by the King of Hungary. So I hope you guys have been enjoying all the content recently at the moment. If you'd like to see more historical battles like this, then do please uh, leave a like, subscribe, and a comment to show your support. Always is appreciated, and uh, keep it up, guys, with all the uh, love you've been showing the channel at the moment. But anyway, we'll have a quick look at some of the units. We've got some uh, Janissary uh, archers here, like, setting up, and uh, they are going to be the front line. They are like a sword and a bow variant unit so they can like do both to a fairly good uh, ability for both we've then got the uh, martelosas here like a greek sword unit they have been uh, quickly assimilated into the ottoman army with the conquest of the balkans and most of greece we have also a uh, janitory billman in the uh, back lines they will be the backbone of the army they'll be sent in if the going gets hard we've got some spears on the flanks here we've got some sifa cav here and uh, we've got some Iskari nobles in behind with some shock infantry. And it's the same on the other flank as well. Just one less uh, Iskari noble. And uh, yeah, and then we've got the general back here. The uh, sultan here. And uh, basically, well, the Holy Roman Empire has a load of sergeants in the front line. Here's Swiss halberds in the second line. We have his shock. Here's dismounted Imperial Ritter. We've got crossbows setting up. And we've got archers. And we've got Imperial Ritter for cavalry. And... Uh, it's soon going to be hotting up in a moment. The Hungarian knights are getting ever so close to the front line of the Ottomans. And here they come. The Ottoman Cav charges in. And there you go. The first charge is off. These Ottoman Cavalry are really, really strong. You see the Ascari Nobles in the background getting around to try and do their flanks. And we've got the Shock Infantry coming in to support. Uh, and we've got Pavi Spears here supporting the... Hungarians. The Hungarians sadly don't have shock infantry in their uh, roster, so they're going to have a really, really tough time dealing with this shock infantry. So they might need to send up some archers or some uh, swords to assist. But as you can see, the cavalry mess has begun. And the Iskari nobles have duked out on the flank. They are probably going to have a harder time fighting these Hungarian knights, but I mean, look at the Hungarian knights in their black armor. It looks awesome. Um, but are they winning? Yeah, they are losing, those Iskari nobles. And there's spears now in here, Pavi spears doing their bit. We've got some halberds in here as well going straight. That's a really good use there by the uh, player of the Hungarians. There's been a charge over here by the uh, Imperial Ritter. They got a good charge off on these uh, Janissary archers and they are moving forward as quickly as possible. The Martelos has now been given the order as well to march and they will be attacking across this entire front. There's a lot of Martelos. It's the main sword infantry that the Ottomans can bring. So they are being brought to the battle today. You can, but if you'd uh, like to join some of these battles, then do join the Discord. The link is down below in the description. And uh, we do a lot of these scenarios or battles, and most of them make it onto the channel at some point or another. Oh, another good, another good charge here by the. Uh, I mean, it's a depleted unit of uh, Hungarians, but it's going to be going into the Ottoman uh, cavalry or not cavalry uh, archers here, and they're being focused down anyway. And now here come the spears up. They're going to try and respond. The cavalry is now breaking for the Hungarians, and the infantry clash has begun. And it looks like the uh, swordsmen for Hungary are losing in this initial fight. But we've got spears coming up to support. Pavi spears here. With their big shields. And the Ottoman, uh, not the Ottoman, the uh, Holy Roman Empire here has not supported his uh, Hungarian ally who is now in the fight. Like, fully in the fight now. It's across the entire front. And you do wonder if he uh, supports... He may get some, uh, have a good chance of fighting the Ottomans. But he, right now he's being a bit slow. He's wondering what to do with his cavalry. And it's allowing the Martosas to 
kind of fill this gap that was still made up in the uh, front line here. And uh, yeah, this... That, actually, the shock infantry is losing in this fight here. I mean, I think mainly because of the cavalry charging in. The king, Sigismund, charged in there like a wild man. And uh, the halberds in here are also doing a lot of damage. Let's get some uh, slow-mo while this is all going on, because this is a very uh, keep kind of part of the battlefield. So you can see the general charging in here. Janistries firing overhead. Trying to get them in the flanks where they charge into their brethren here. And then now we've got a depleted unit of C for charging to kind of stop the charge. They kind of didn't. You can see the Sultan in the background over there. He is uh, getting ready to come up and support. And the Janitries are being sent forward. They are moving forward. They're not coming going in yet, but they are getting close to the front line. I mean, there's a lot of losing on this front line. The Pavis here are losing. The Shock Infantry is uh, having a hard time. The Skyrim Nobles are still holding on. And the uh, shock infantry here is also losing. So the flank for the left of the Ottomans is not looking too great. We've got the Impi uh, the uh, Holy Roman Empire now going in. I was about to call them the Empire, which I guess they are. The but uh, no, we've got the sergeants going in. And we've got Martelosas engaging on this flank. Oh, no, we're not. We've got uh, Janistries, in fact, sorry. You can tell by the um, missile ammo that they have left. So we have Janistries in here now holding the line. While the Amartos is trying to get a bit closer, I think these guys haven't really committed yet. And we've got a box kind of going on here in the uh, the uh, spears. And then the cavalry flank on this side is also uh, well underway, it looks like. So we'll go back to normal speed for a bit. And the uh, the Imperial Richter is now fighting against the Skyrim Nobles, Sifa, all sorts. And we're going to have the Shock Infantry coming in here. And this is a really good tactic they should always do. You should always mix cavalry and Shock Infantry together. Because Shock Infantry is so good at just chopping down units. And here we go. It's going to be a good charge by the Imperial Ritter. Oh, it's a quite a good charge, yeah. Going to mow down that uh, spear unit. It kind of just got caught out. I was trying to flank around this big uh, blob of Ritter of themselves. I mean, you can look at that. Imperial Ritter wavering at 67. Insane. I mean, they're winning on this one here, but they're barely fighting anything here. They're just fighting a small bunch of uh, Skyrim Nobles. They really need to get involved. He just sent infantry across to support this flank. But, uh, I mean, the Imperial Ritz is yet to be committed. And the Halberds are now moving up. The Swiss Halberds getting ready into position. They're getting focused down by uh, Janistries. We've got Pavis coming in as well. They look like they're going to lock in stuff. We've got Marslos is here surrounding the swords. The Sergeants here just getting outmaneuvered. And they're getting counterflanked, though, are the Martelosas by Pavis. And we've got Shock Infantry coming in as well. It is becoming a brawl here in this front line. On the other side, you can see here the Ottomans are starting to waver to the uh, Hungarians. They're having a really tough time here. And But on this left flank, you can see Halberd is starting to break. We've got Sifa starting to break, though, for the uh, Ottomans. And there's still a lot of trading units going on here. It is becoming a bit of a nightmare here. And I think at this point... Yes, at that point, Sigismund is shot down. I don't know how that really happens. I think he's shot by like a stray arrow or what. I was not focusing at him, really. I think I was shooting uh, halberds that were nearby. But he seems to just fall down and die. I think he's the only, it's the only cavalry unit there. Well, that's not even his. That's a Sifu. I don't know how he dies, to be honest. But the Hungarians are losing faith with the uh, loss of their general. And the Pavi Spear, look at that, breaking at 150. It's only lost two men. It's insane. But the Marsos are still losing here, having a really tough time. They're going to break here. Um, so it looks like they're going to have to send in some Janistry archers just to hold the line, stiffen the line with some of these elite troops. And we've now got shock infantry surrounding these Pavis here. And, I mean, they're wavering as well. Pavis don't do well when surrounded. And we've got Shock Infantry for the Imperial Ritter going in. They're going to try and get lots of kills on these Martelosas as well. I mean, it's just, this kind of the fight over on this side in comparison to the Hungarian line. This is like a nice solid line. There's lots of, like, little uh, patches of fighting going on on this flank here. And it's allowing the Ottoman Empire to flank around a lot more effectively. We've got Halberdiers in here uh, battling away at these spears here. And the Imperial Ritter flanking on in as well. And these spears won't hold long. They're stuck between a hammer and an anvil. The anvil being the uh, 
pikes and the hammer beam those uh, nasty imp dismantled imperial ritter the nobility of germany has turned up And yeah, I mean, these halberdiers over here are losing, these Swiss halberdiers. And look at that, three units of breaking like that. And that's just freed up about six or so, or so more units. And uh, we've got cavalry in uh, shock infantry now freed up over here. They're having a big old fight still in this flank. And we're now pushing on to the Emperor. The Emperor is under threat from some sea for cavalry, but he does look like he'll probably be dealt with quite easy. This is a more fresh unit compared to the sea for, and he's got some risk of support. But the Ritter is now having to go to deal with uh, some Ascari nobles. So who knows? The Emperor may be left under threat. But I mean, there you go. Breaking Sifa. It seems like they'll do just fine. I mean, the it looks like the Emperor will be in safe hands with his bodyguard. Don't know where the Emperor is exactly. But uh, maybe we'll never find him. But he's in here somewhere, finding it out. And uh, yeah, the, Os uh, the Ottomans have basically broken through the Hungarian side. Now they've are breaking as uh, the word of the king falling passes along the line and there you go that's almost a chain route it's just these archers left for Hungary just a few archers and then that is probably gonna wrap it up because now this left wing of the Ottomans can almost uh, just flank around and threaten the Hungarians or uh, the uh, Holy Roman Empire I do apologize or they can just like come and uh, support the center because I mean the center's actually not doing that great for the Ottomans they're wa wavering here but they're not able to break through these uh, halberdiers even though they're looking the wrong way at the moment they're just getting surrounded in lots of different spots and the Genoese are now in combat as well it's all the fighting's get, got to the back lines now fighting Martelosas I mean these Genoese will fight okay in combat probably against Martelosas as well they'll be fine they're a pretty sturdy unit I like the officer unit. Look at that guy. So armored. He's got a tiny little shield. Like, uh, this will protect me, this tiny little shield. But yeah, there you go. The Hungarians are all routed. The Holy Roman Emperor is still holding his own, though. He's still doing his uh, best. Got units here losing decisively, though. And uh, that's a huge route there. And we've got Ascari nobles trying to chase down these uh, archers here. And a, this is the kind of the main concentration now of the resistance of the uh, Holy Roman Empire. And like in history, the Ottoman Empire is going to uh, win today by the looks of it. Yes, it was a crushing defeat. In history, there was, I think, 20,000 troops on each side. In this one, the uh, Ottomans were ever so slightly outnumbered uh, by about 30 men. But yes, they were evenly matched and... Uh, they was a crushing defeat for the Coalition of Crusaders, who, uh, this is one of the final Crusades, and there you go, an Ascari Noble charge into the rear as well. But yeah, this was one of the final Crusades. Um, there's this uh, this one, the Crusade of Nicopolis, it's known as, and the Crusade of Varna, which is uh, about, I want to say about 40 years later, it's about that sort of time. It's in about 1446, 47, I want to say. Uh, yeah, that sort of time, 46, 47. And that's also a defeat. That's, uh, it, that's kind of condemns Hungary later in history. This, kind of, this crusade condemns Bulgaria to being under Ottoman occupation. Uh, and Hungary becomes the new front line. But then Varna kind of condemns a lot of Hungary to the occupation of the Ottomans, I believe. Well, certainly, certainly Serbia. Maybe a bit to Hungary as well. And there you go. The uh, Sultan's now getting involved. There he is. There, I think that's. I think this one's him. I'm not quite sure. This guy might be him, actually, with his uh, golden scepter. Yeah, I think it might be that guy. But there you go. So the final few units are breaking. I mean, the Emperor's actually held to the e to the end. He's now losing decisively. I feel because he just feels the battle is uh, turning out of his favour. As it has been since probably the uh, Hungarian general died. If he hadn't died, I think it would have been an extremely close one. It was fairly close as it was. Uh, a lot of Ottomans have fallen. And uh, for quite a long time, it could have gone either way. And there you go. The Sultan charges into the rear of the Holy Roman Emperor and breaks him. But uh, yeah, it was close for quite a while. So, I mean, credit to the Crusader players. 
They were just unfortunate with the uh, Hungarian king getting killed by a rogue arrow because, honest to God, I was not really shooting him. He kind of charged in. He got shot at when um, he charged my archers, but after he kind of retreated to his own lines, I was honorable and uh, stopped firing at him, but I don't know what killed him. Um, but anyway, so yes, I was playing as the uh, Ottoman Empire, and uh, it was a close victory for us today. And like in history where I think they did describe it as a decisive victory. Um, but we were playing on a Nicopolis map. That was a, uh, I should have added, that was a Nicopolis uh, unique map. That is on the workshop. And uh, I definitely would recommend going and checking out. It's really cool. Um, it's got lots of like, as you saw there, like the castle and it has like camps on either side. It was really cool. And uh, I, I do apologize, I didn't show it off so as much, but this battle got straight into the action, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so have a look at some of the end results. So you've got 278 here for these heavy infantry. It's the best one out of them. Uh, another one got 272. And um, the spears, which are like the only bad units I had, they were tier two. The best one getting 95 kills. Um, and then uh, the uh, Janissary Billman getting sent in, they got 150 kills, the best one. The Martelosas, I think the best one getting about 118. There are a lot of them, but I mean, they did hold the line. My uh, Janissary Archers getting a 203, um, but most of them getting a good amount of kills. This one got charged by cavalry and got 10 kills. And the Ascari Nobles getting 124, which is okay for them. And the Asifa getting 158, which is not too bad themselves. And my general getting 111. And then Heads, who was playing as the Holy Roman Empire, uh, he's not. he did say to us that he's not very good at uh, land battles, but I thought he held his own quite well. Um, possibly if he dated his Hungarian ally a little earlier, then uh, he would have done a lot better because it would have required more micro for me. But I was able to kind of focus on Hungary to start with, then take on the Holy Roman Empire uh, a little bit after. But uh, his uh, Imperial Ritter, I, again, kind of left them at the back. He probably could have sent them in a little bit earlier. But he got 139 kills with them, which is not too bad, the best one. His uh, Halberds kind of got left a bit uh, undefended, but they got 76 kills, which is not too bad. Sardin's getting 70 kills. His uh, Archer's getting 25. And his uh, Genoese getting 68. And his uh, Imperial Ritter, the best unit in his army, getting 232. Aiden, uh, who's playing as the Kingdom of Hungary, his uh, General getting 40 kills before being uh, taken down by a rogue arrow. His halberdier is getting, doing really well, getting 186 and 169. His uh, swordsman getting 104 and 105. And his uh, Genoese getting 80 kills, and his uh, Hungarian knights getting 60 and 70 kills. Um, which they, I'm sure they could have done better, but they charged into some Cifa, and they were it was a really hard fight for them. But uh, yeah, they, that is the Battle of Nicopolis. History repeats itself, and the Ho Ottoman Empire is victorious and can go on to take the rest of the Balkans for itself. And uh, yeah, the Crusaders are going to have to come up with another idea of how they're going to get rid of the Ottomans. But I mean, they decided to just do another crusade in history. Um, and, like I said, at the Crusade of Varna. Um, but if you guys enjoyed and would like to see more 1212 and more historical battles, let me know in the comments if there's any historical battles that you'd like me to try and do. Um, then I will try and uh, my best to uh, rally some people and to... Uh, to uh, try and recreate them. But if, like I said, leave a like, subscribe, and a comment on any historical battles that you want me to do. And anyway, Legionnaires, I will see you in the next one.